So it's been like a week since I posted that setup video where I showed all the stuff that I'm gonna be using for 2021, except the video card, because I couldn't get my hands on a 3000 series. And sure enough, here we are one week later. So maybe this is kind of like a continuation of that video. I now have an RTX 3090 in my system, and it's an absolute monster in terms of performance and size. Check this out. This is probably a good time to say that this is not intended to be a review of the RTX 3090. The 3000 series cards from Nvidia launched a while ago now, and just because of the crazy supply shortage, I've only just been able to get my hands on one right now, so that's why I'm showing it to you now. If you really wanna know about um, some of the GPU architecture and all the stuff that's behind this thing, then go ahead and check out some reviews online. There's a billion of them out there. What we're gonna do instead is take a close up look at this 3090, and then I'm gonna actually play some games with you right here on camera, where you can physically see the performance on the screen and how smooth it is. And I'll show you all the different settings that I'm using in game. And we'll throw an FPS counter up there so you can see the real time frame rate as we go through and play these games. So this should be a really different and unique way to take a look at the performance of a video card and a system overall. The RTX 3090 is powered by NVIDIA's GA102 GPU, which includes 28.3 billion transistors. And it's based on their brand new Ampere microarchitecture. In addition to 10,496 CUDA cores, second generation ray tracing cores, and third generation tensor cores, Nvidia packed in 24 gigabytes of GDDR6X graphics memory on a 384-bit memory interface. GPU clock speeds on the reference RTX 3090 can hit as high as 1.7 gigahertz, but on this ASUS overclocked version, that can go as high as 1890. This card uses a custom triple fan cooling solution and the rotation of the center fan is actually reversed compared to the outer two to reduce turbulence inside the heatsink beneath. The heatsink on this thing's absolutely massive compared to older cards and even cards from just the previous generation. Fitting one of these things in your case is going to take up three open PCI Express slots. When it comes to powering this beast, ASUS recommends an 850 watt power supply and you're going to need three 8 pin PCI Express power connectors. The first game we're gonna play is Cyberpunk because I'm sure that's what everybody really wants to see right now. How does the 3090 handle a game like Cyberpunk all maxed out? That's what I'm gonna show you first, but uh, just to let everybody know, the specs of the system are a Ryzen 9 3950X with 3600 megahertz uh, G-Skill Trident Z Neo memory in dual channel mode. The motherboard's an Asus ROG Strix uh, X570E gaming motherboard. Um, yeah, RTX 3090, a whole bunch of drives and stuff like that, but that's the core hardware and that's all you really need to worry about, I guess. So before we jump into Cyberpunk, I just wanna show you what settings we're using. So if we click on settings, um, I'm gaming on an ultra wide. So the resolution here is 3440 by 1440. Um, and I don't have VSync on or anything like that. Now, if we go to the graphics tab, what I'm using here is the preset. So um, you can drag that along low, medium, high, but we want ray tracing and we want it maxed right out. So ray tracing ultra is what we're gonna set it at. And then we're gonna go into the game and just take a walk through this marketplace scene here and see what kind of frame rates we can get. We've got the frame rate counter up here. So just keep your eye on that. Looks like we're in the 60s and like, look at this ray trace lighting. It's absolutely gorgeous in here. And look at this frame rate. Like it's so smooth, just buttery smooth performance coming from this system right now. The RTX 3090 is an absolute like dream of a video card. This is one of the most demanding games I've ever played. Um, I played it on my 3080 Ti, 3080 Ti, <laughs> that doesn't exist. No, I played it on my 1080 Ti, which is kind of old and it really struggled to keep up, but this 3090 just absolutely destroys it. And of course with the 1080 Ti, I couldn't use any ray tracing or anything like that, but that's not the case now. Look at this lighting. It's just absolutely gorgeous in this game. So I just skipped through some time so that I just got hit by a car. I just skipped through some time so that we could take a look at what this world looks like during the day because we just saw it at night and it looked pretty cool and glowy and stuff like that. But now it's around 6 p.m. in the game. It's supposed to be 6 p.m. So we got a nice sunset coming in. And again, look at this ray trace lighting. It's absolutely gorgeous. Ray tracing, all the settings cranked up to the max. Population density set to the max. You can see all the people walking around and stuff like that. This world just really comes to life in this game. It's just unreal. Look at this, look at this lighting. It's just absolutely gorgeous. I can't get over it. And look at this frame rate, hitting 70 now down here by the water. The next game we're gonna jump into is Red Dead Redemption 2. It's another big, huge open world game, kind of like Cyberpunk, but at the same time, it's like the opposite of Cyberpunk because it doesn't take place in the future. It takes place way back in the day and it's like a Western and you play it from a third person perspective instead of first. But anyways, let's take a look at these settings that I'm gonna be using before we jump in and actually get into the gameplay. So again, the resolution is 3440 by 1440. Um, 
I'm not using VSync. And then to set the actual graphic settings, I'm gonna come up here to the preset. And the reason I keep using presets is so that it's easy for you guys to duplicate it if you wanna try these settings on your system. So all I'm gonna do is take that slider and move it all the way to the right and crank everything up to the max. And we're gonna apply these changes and say yes, we wanna keep them, and then we're gonna jump into the game. Now this is another game that can just look absolutely amazing when it comes to lighting. And look at the performance here. Again, we're getting you know upper 60s, um, close to 70. Sometimes it hits 70 actually, if you just keep an eye on that frame rate counter up here. But look at this lighting, like absolutely gorgeous, kind of like Cyberpunk, but I don't think this game is taking advantage of ray tracing. Maybe it is, but I didn't see it in the settings anyway. But everything's cranked up to the max. There's lots of vegetation, uh, lots of wildlife and stuff going on. And again, those light rays just coming through the, uh, the fog and stuff like that. Look how gorgeous this is. Some of these new games, man, they just look so good compared to what I remember when I was growing up playing video games. This is just unbelievable. There's nice water reflections. If you haven't played this game, I do recommend this one actually. Like I said before, it's not really my cup of tea, if you will. I like to play first person shooter games, but in terms of graphics and storyline, this Red Dead Redemption 2 is actually really good. But we're supposed to be talking about performance here. So just, just keep an eye on that frame rate counter as I move around here. Again, very solid performance. Look how smooth this is as I pan around. No lagging, no stuttering whatsoever, just buttery smooth gameplay the whole time. You can run through this forest here with all this vegetation. Again, we're sticking around 70. It's not really, oh my God, we're almost hitting 80. Oh my God, look at this. This looks so good, it's unbelievable. I've never really been one to want to go horseback riding or anything, but I can just do it all day in this game and just look at the graphics. Some kind of shootout going on behind me here. Whoa, it jumped over a fence by accident. Stomp on some crops. Oh yeah. Now I got Doom Eternal loaded up, and for some reason my frame rate counter is not working with this game, but it does have one built in. The only downside is it's now over here on this side, so you're probably not gonna be able to see it as easily as you could before when it was on the left-hand corner of the screen, but that's all right. When I jump into first-person view, you'll be able to see it there. So let's take a quick look at the settings before we jump into some gameplay here. 3440 by 1440 again, 21 to nine widescreen aspect ratio. Now let's just go down to these graphics quality settings here. Overall quality, Ultra Nightmare, that's what we want right there. That's as high as this game is gonna let us go, and it's equivalent to, I guess, Ultra on most normal games, but Doom likes to call it Nightmare. So I've already actually got it set like that, so let's jump in and see what it's like. So here we go, right into a fight scene. Love Doom, it's super fast paced if you haven't played it before. This is a lot more my style. I grew up playing Unreal Tournament, played the original, played 2003, 2004, and then stopped after that because they came out with UT3 and it was the worst game ever and uh, pretty much killed the franchise, so yeah. So at Ultra Nightmare settings on Doom, and by the way, I'm playing absolutely terribly because I'm trying to make this video and I'm focusing on what I'm saying, but Ultra Nightmare settings on Doom look absolutely awesome. It's not like it's a game where you can stand around and look at the graphics though, because it's so fast paced, but it does look unbelievable. And 200 frames per second, I mean, what are we getting right now? Look at all the stuff that's going on on the screen and we're like 140, 160, 170. Frame rates are kind of bouncing around and uh, they're all really high. Unbelievable. Now I just quit that crazy fight scene so that we can slow it down for a second. This is like the, I don't know, home base or it's like a spaceship or something like that overlooking Earth. I don't actually really know what it is, but this is where you start missions from in this game. And I just wanted to go here so we can take a walk around and look at the smoothness of um, the gameplay and the frame rates and stuff like that without me jumping around and shooting things like crazy. So um, let's just take a walk around and see what we've got. So the frame rate right now is actually showing like 260, 270. Again, Ultra Nightmare absolutely maxed out at 3440 by 40. 1440. This game is getting absolutely shredded by the 3090. And um, I guess that's to be expected. It's not like it's, I don't know. It has, Doom always had good graphics, all the Doom games for their time, but there's always stuff that comes out that is kind of um, a lot more demanding. For example, like Cyberpunk right now in 2021. But still like this, this little home base area, it's got nice lighting overall. Nice particle effects and stuff like that. Again, it's not cyberpunk, but it looks really good for a fast paced shooter game that you don't really have time to sit around and look at the graphics that are on. It's, um, I think they did a really good job with it, but this gameplay in here is just, it's unbelievable. I mean, 200 plus frames per second on a shooter game is where you wanna be. That's like competitive esports level. I know like Counter-Strike players like to get like 500 FPS or whatever the max is on there, but who cares about that? This is like amazing for a game like this with these quality settings.
There's just one more thing I wanna show you before we end this video, and it's this 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark run that I did today with the 3090 at stock settings. By the way, everything I just showed you is at stock settings, the CPU, the RAM, everything. Now this is an overclocked version of the 3090, but I didn't enable that in the software. So it shouldn't be boosting to its maximum potential um, until you enable that. So there should be a little more performance left on the table is basically what I'm trying to say. And um, considering everything stock, I think this is an interesting result. We got 18,582 for the combined uh, time spy score. And when you compare those results online, if I open this browser, um, that kind of shows you where you stack up against everybody else that has used the benchmark in the past. And according to this, it says we are better than 99% of all results, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, if you click here, it'll show you the specs of what's beating you. So the same processor, but um, people are running dual GPUs in order to beat a single 3090. And even then, look at the score, 18,582, 19,781, a little overclocking, and I bet I can catch up or maybe even beat that. So I thought that was pretty cool. I just wanted to show you guys that. So um, so that's it. That's my 3090. As you can see, I'm super happy with it. I think it's like the best thing I've ever bought. It's my favorite piece of computer hardware that I've ever owned by far. It's just big, massive, and powerful, and I absolutely love it. So thanks for watching this video. Give it a thumbs up, and if you're not subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button and come back for more because there's a lot of stuff on the way. So we'll see you soon.